Hi guys, it's Barnaby for Spurred On, and this is a new episode called The View From The Other Side. It kind of says what it does on the tin, really. We get someone, a fan from the opposition that we're playing in the next few days, to come and talk to us about their thoughts about the game. Now, obviously, this is difficult for me to start here because it's Chelsea on Sunday, and I've invited Jack Davis from the Chelsea Fans Channel to be our first incumbent in The View From The Other Side seat. Jack, how are you, mate? I'm good, mate. I'm very well, thank you. I'm fairly optimistic about this weekend. Optimistic? Well, my first question was going to be, are you nervous? So that kind of answers that <laughs> yeah. question. Now, uh, would you say your optimism stems from your recent form or the fact that you used to call it Three Point Lane or a mixture of both? Yeah, well, I think those days of uh, a guaranteed three points at White Hart Lane are over now. Um, thank did God. Did a little bit of research. In this will be the 46th time in the Premier League era that we've played this fixture mm -hmm. and Spurs have won four so far. <laughs> All right, you just said it's the end of the <laughs> three-point lane days yeah. and now you've brought in a stat that makes me worried again. Um, but your form your form has improved last few games. You beat Norwich yeah. and then you had a, an easy one in the Champions League in Israel. Yes, um, exactly. So we're hoping to make it three on the trot, mm -hmm. which um, I'm not sure we've done yet this season. So. No. Um, yeah, off the back of a big, um, you know, four 0 win, which sort of flatters us slightly on paper, because um, we weren't really brilliant mm -hmm. uh, in Israel. But yes, I'm hoping we can continue this bit of form and um, give you a good game. Okay, so rumours from what I've seen that uh, John Terry and Ramirez uh, are struggling for the yeah. game now. I have to say, as a Spurs fan, we're always slightly, uh, you know, or at least I feel always slightly a bit iffy when managers. Uh, mention things like that. I imagine that John Terry is the kind of player who will shake it off yes. for Sunday. He wouldn't want to yeah. miss that one. He gets so much abuse at YR Lane and yet he pretty much always scores. So do you think he'll, sh he'll shake that off? And what about Ramirez? Yeah, I think Ramirez, by what I'm hearing, Ramirez is probably a definite out. Mm -hmm. uh, John Terry, although he was stretched off uh, in midweek, I think he's going to start. Uh, I think uh, Terry needs to be on Kane. Kane's coming into a bit of form now. And um, uh, yeah, I think Terry, as you say, will shake off uh, any broken leg yeah. that he may come I like that with. understatement there. Kane's coming into a bit of form. Uh, I think he's now scored nine in his last six. He scored the winner against Carabag <laughs> last night. He is our absolute talisman. And rumours are rife that uh, Chelsea fancy a piece of him as well. Do you know what? I would snap up Harry Kane all day <laughs> long yeah, if he's available. Unfortunately, Jose... Would you like Messi as well, mate? Because uh, yeah, that's if, about as likely. If he's going. Um, <laughs> although, apparently, mate, we are not in the market. Uh, Mourinho right. has repeatedly said that um, we will not sign any players in January. Yeah, so isn't that just that like, space? isn't that just kind of like Mourinho's I stick up for my players mind game? Just someone comes available. Uh, who was it? Was it Quadrado last this time last year you bought? That, I mean, not, I'm not saying that went well, but <laughs> I think he, he tends to say, oh, you know, I'm not going to buy anyone. And then if something comes up. Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly wouldn't put my life on it not happening. Yeah. Um, but it's sort of strange that he keeps sort of making uh, the effort to reiterate the fact that he's yeah. not going to ask the board for any more money and he's sticking by the, the line that yeah. this current squad are good enough to get us out of our current um, malaise. Yeah, so 15th is where you are. It's, it's easy for me to say you're currently 15th in the league. We are fifth. There are 10 points between us. So if uh, Spurs win, we go 13 points ahead of you. You know, yeah. hypothetically, if that were to happen, is that the end of your top four hopes, do you think? Something like for us to even to get into the top four now, we have to um, basically br no put it like this: no team at this stage of the season um, has ever been in the position we're currently in mm -hmm. and got into the top four. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So we need to go on a record-breaking run of victories, yeah. just in order to um, have a hope of being in the Champions League. Unless we win the whole competition. Yeah, which unfortunately it's not gonna happen. Which unfortunately has happened before <laughs> and affected us. But uh, let's, <laughs> not, yeah. let's not talk too much uh, about let's that. Let's know in the comments <laughs> beneath, guys. What do you think about that one? No, <laughs> maybe don't. Um, I have to say, I've been saying this for a while. Uh, I do think there are only probably two clubs in the league, City and Chelsea, who can go on a run of maybe 12 or 13 games. Obviously, I desperately don't want that mm. to you know, include this Sunday. Um, in terms of what you see, uh, you know, I'm sure you don't watch Spurs a lot, but in terms of what you do see, apart from, say, Kane, uh, about Spurs as a team these mm. days, you know, what are the things that kind of impress you? I think, um, I think the youth mm. element. Uh, I think I'm right in saying that you've got the youngest overall squad right, in yeah. the whole league. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and your manager seems to, you know, show a lot of faith mm. in, in the youngsters. And I think, you know, that's, that's admirable, I think. So many other teams just go straight into the transfer market, even when they've got, you know, a decent youth setup. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times, managers are too frightened to put their faith in the youth and to blood the youngsters. 
and they'll just go, you know, abroad and sign a foreigner to bring them in. Yeah. So I think that that's really admirable. That um, is something that's been levelled at Jose a bit, hasn't it? Is that, is that something? Yeah. I mean, because from a Spurs uh, fan uh, point of view, um, and you know, it hasn't always been that way. We've tried the other way as well. Mm. Um, I have to say, there is something that the fans uh, relate to more about having players who've come up through the academy or players you've bought young. Is that something you miss a little bit at Chelsea? I mean, obviously you've got Loftus Cheek coming through, but he's stagnating a little yeah. bit. You know, do you think the Chelsea fans would like a bit more of that? Oh, of course, mate. I mean, you know, we haven't really had that since John Terry. Mm. You know, John Terry, sort of Jody Morris came, you know, were breaking through at the end of the 90s. Yeah. You know, that, that's how long ago we're talking in terms yeah. of having a, a homegrown product that's gone on to be a major player in the starting 11. Yeah. Um, l all hopes are pinned on Loftus-Cheek. Mm -hmm. uh, he looks like he's the closest in terms of, um, you know, breaking through into the, you know, permanent, uh, permanently. Um, but yeah, it's frustrating, Barnaby, because our youth, you know, we've got so many youngsters at yeah. Chelsea. I mean, you've seen the amount of players that are out on loan all yeah. over the world. Is it like and 50 players or I something? I think it's the most you're allowed. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> it, it, is, it is frustrating knowing that there's a raft of young talent, you know, on the books. Yeah. And then when you see actually how many of these guys are getting a chance, yeah. i.e. hardly any like, sure. you know, Ruben and... Well, a couple of others and also, and especially there. in my opinion, when you see how De Bruyne did when he went out to Wolfsburg, and now also Schürrle as well yeah. is playing well out there. Now, obviously, they're not youth; uh, they're not academy graduates. They were bought young, and maybe they played in the academy a bit. But you know, that is an example as well as uh, of you not blooding those young players because yeah, the slightly just older how players. To nurture them, you yeah. Know? Um, no, yeah, you're right. I suppose because De Bruyne did play a bit, didn't he? But mm. then for him to then go on to City for 57, 58 million, it must be a slap in the face, yeah. isn't it? Well, we we pretty much, you know, it looked like we couldn't wait to get rid of him. Yeah. He came in. I think Jose turned his nose up straight away. Right. Uh, I think there was, you know, there was rumours of an attitude problem as far as De Bruyne was concerned. Right. Um, that doesn't uh, seem quite right. I mean, he doesn't seem like that kind of kid. But yeah. yeah. I, I, what do you yeah. know? You don't know. But I mean. yeah, I, th I think. Um, uh, one of the reasons why we got rid of him was, I think Mourinho said, okay, you're not gonna, you're not an instant starter. Uh, you have to sort of prove yourself. And uh, I think De Bruyne wasn't entirely, didn't really agree with Mourinho. Right. That he shouldn't be, right. you know, that he wasn't the finished article. Sure. And, um, and I think Mourinho's one of those managers that if you, if you, you know, if you cross him no. too much, then he's gonna. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, although that seems a bit, unlike what's happened in the last few days with Costa, where they had a run in and then at half time, Jose saying kisses and cuddles. I actually yeah. thought about this. Um, this was in the uh, game in, uh, it was Maccabee Haifa, wasn't it? Is that the game you were playing? In Tel Aviv. In Tel Aviv, right, anyway. Um, uh, I thought when that happened, any other player to some degree, Jose probably wouldn't pick him for the next game, but really there's no one instead of Costa, so he has to do the kissing and cuddling thing. Yeah, I mean, we've got Remy, um, who, who always looks kind of sharp when he comes on, but you, you just don't have not top level huge faith in him. You yeah. know what I mean to to, to guarantee um, you know if he's put through on goal to guarantee a score. Although he is a good finisher. Yeah. Um, uh, and Diego, like we're all sticking by him because we know what a machine is. We know what a beast is. He absolutely destroyed every single defence he was put up against yeah. last season. Yeah. And it's just it, well, it's the whole Chelsea conundrum of 2014-15. Like what the bloody hell. Is going on, yeah, yeah, uh, and we keep thinking next game it was going to happen. Yeah. Next game is going to happen, yeah. so we keep sticking with. Hopefully them. that isn't the case. Uh, okay, so just a couple more questions. Yep. Um, talked a lot about Mourinho. Uh, you know, this this is very strange for Spurs, but at the moment we have a manager who we all believe in. The board is backing, whereas you, I think, uh, the fans are a little bit split down the middle. Uh, if if Spurs were to turn you over like we did on uh, New Year's Day last uh, last year, this year, in, uh, five three, mm. if we were to turn you over again and it was a bit of a thrashing again, even would Jose's job be in doubt, or do you think Roman's sticking by him this time, whatever? Um, I think you have to stick by uh, Jose Mourinho. I think my personal opinion is, and like, as you said, I think the majority of Chelsea fans are 100% with Jose. There are an element. Um, who, who are a bit unsure sure. at the moment. But my opinion is, each week, if when you look at the starting eleven, you go, yeah, that's a, that's a great team. Yeah. All those players are great players. Yeah. It's the players' fault we're in this situation. Right. The manager can only do so much. Yes, there's maybe some behind the scenes arguments and some mm -hmm. weird stuff going on in the dressing mm -hmm. room that we don't know about. But at the end of the day, he's still picking 11 top, top quality players with a few maybe even world class players thrown in. Yeah. And time and time again, it's those players that aren't delivering the goods. 
And I think only so much blame can be laid at the right. manager's door. And I think a lot of it needs, the players need to look at themselves in the mirror. In which case, it sounds to me like a bit of complacency and then possibly, and this is what I'm hoping for, some slight old legs involved. And therefore, with Spurs' young, dynamic, pacey team, although it's a shame we'll be missing Deli Alley through suspension, I kind of think we've got a good shot, although obviously coming back from that 6,000-mile uh, round trip to Carabag won't help us. So mm. that leads me into prediction, score prediction for yeah. the game. And then secondly, your prediction of where Spurs will end up this season. OK, so uh, as I said, I am feeling positive and I am going to go for a Chelsea win at yeah. the lane. Um, why break the habit of a lifetime? Score? I'm going to go 2-1 with Willian um, scoring another free kick. Yeah, yeah. OK. All right. Well, two free kicks by the sound of it. Yeah, Where's yeah, the other goal coming one. from? At least one, yeah. OK, and then uh, where do you think Spurs will end this season? How do you think we'll do? I think you will just miss out on uh, Champions League spot, unfortunately. To you? For you. To you lot? To us, yeah. Uh, I, I, to be honest, I don't think we're going to see too much of a uh, surprise come the end of the season. I think it's going to be you know, the usual players. Usual suspects. Um, and Liverpool, maybe? Mm, no. I, no. I, see, I see Arsenal being there uh, yeah. and the two uh, Manchester teams and Chelsea. All right. Because we're going to go on that record-breaking run. Well, Jack, I appreciate that. My personal opinion is this. I'm worried about Sunday. I'm worried that Mourinho will Mourinho us like he did in the Capital One Cup final last year. He put Zuma in front of the back four and basically nullified our play. But if Terry's injured, Zuma will have to come into the back four mm. and then that might open it up a little bit. So I'm worried that it might be 1-0 Chelsea, but I'm hopeful that we'll at least get a draw. And if we do win on Sunday, I'll tell you what, boys and girls. I'll start to believe. I'll genuinely start to believe something serious can happen. Jack, thank you so much, mate, for coming along. Much appreciated. Guys, let us know what you thought of our little chat in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at Spurred on TV. Come on, you Spurs. He's going to get a brace. He got a brace against them last season. Stick it in your teeth. Straighten up those teeth. I love it. He's going to get another one. 